to uh, move on to our next lightning round session. And uh, Lee, I am switching over presentation to you. Uh, Lee Schauer, director of Rock Springs Public Library in Wisconsin, is going to talk about kitchen creations at the library. And we do see your screen, so you're all set to go. Terrific. Thank you. So I'm, um, I've been at Rock Springs for about a year and a half. Um, Rock Springs is a really tiny library. Um, we have 362 people in our municipality. And I think our service population is under 1,000. Um, a couple years ago, we were devastated by flooding. The whole area was, and our library was closed for about a year. Um, so we lost businesses. We lost um, probably over 125 people. We lost homes. So we're still, you know, it's been a couple years. We're still in the process of rebuilding our community. Um, so we have, we, we have rebuilt our community center, which the library is housed within. And right next door to us, thank goodness, is a lovely kitchen that was just remodeled a few years ago. So um, it hadn't been used. It's for rent in our community, but um, it's, uh, it's been sitting quiet for a long time. So when I came here, I thought, man, I have to do something here. Uh, perfect for the library. And it's, it was the perfect maker program. Um, so everyone's heard of um, maker programs in their library. This is, I think, the most universal one ever because who doesn't eat? Um, so one of the first things that happened, which kind of tipped the scales into my kitchen creations programs, is um, we have a local artist who's also a, a bread maker. And she had done a program a few years ago. And the director who I replaced um, brought her in and said, you have to have her do something. So she was the start of our, um, let's see, she was the start of our um, kitchen creations program. She came in. Um, this was our first flyer that we put out for her bread making. Um, those are her pictures of bread that she's made in the past. Um, we had good participation. Probably around 12 people came to the program. Um, and it was, a, it was a start. And I thought, man, we should continue this. So we did cookie, Christmas cookie exchange that uh, winter. That wasn't too popular. It was way too close to Christmas. Um, but we did have some children participate in that. And um, I'll just go through a few other things that we had. Um, we, we, did make the, we, we did the bread making again last year. Um, and it was the, we decided to pitch it just a little bit differently. We still had the same flyers, but when I went to the newspapers, we pitched it as artisan bread making and um, um, the, the fancifulness of it and um, the culinary delight of it. And um, this was just run last December, and we had over 34 participants. So um, it, was, it, was a, it was a little bit of a tipping point in our programming and suddenly we had a whole lot of people from who, who usually go to other libraries so we're taking um, patrons into our library who've never been here and kind of wowing them with our space. Um, then let's see we'll go to the next one. We continued this on every month. We had a few um, for um, St. Patrick's Day um, we had a, a man who was a chef at a local restaurant um, in another town come, and he taught us how to do Irish potatoes and corned beef hash. I mean, corned beef, not corned beef hash, corned beef. Um, and then we got uh, somebody suggested, wouldn't it be great if we could do homemade bagels? Well, I know how to do homemade bagels, so um, we did homemade bagels. This is a program. The homemade bagels is one that we have done three times now. It's very popular. Um, and it crosses all, all age groups. Little kids love this, teens love this, um, and adults love this. You know, it's, it's something that you have a lot that no one ever thinks they can, they can do by themselves, but homemade bagels are so much better than store-bought. Um, let's see. Uh, we also found, you know, the more we did this, the more talent we found in our own community. And the more people were willing to share their skills and their um, specialties. So we found out we had candy makers 
in our community, and they made uh, they were specialty uh, caramel makers. Uh, that was a popular program around Valentine's Day. And we also have a lot of winemakers in our area. So we got in a local winemaker, and that was a really cool program, too. It was much more on the educational side, where people sat down and took notes. Um, and all the other programs were very hands-on. Um, so people got to just, you know, it was, it was physical, and then it was... Um, and they could taste their food at the end. But the winemaking was educational, but then at the very end, um, we gave out samples of wine, which made it, which made it very popular. Um, and let's see. Um, this is another flyer for the homemade bagels. Um, these are some pictures of some of the programs. Um, and you can kind of see a little bit. There's a lot of, um, a lot of men women, teenagers, um, there's children, it's, um, it's, it's really all over the map. So um, we also had our, our um, library board president is a pie maker who's had family recipes for pie crust uh, passed down generation to generation. She shared with us um, pie making was a, an awesome program. Um, and we also then got into homemade pasta, which I think uh, rivaled bagel making in um, p popularity. What we got also from homemade pasta is um, uh, we now have a pasta maker in our library for checkout, which is a very popular checkout. And since I've done this program at other libraries too, and they've gotten pasta makers at their library, and it's just never in their library. It's always checked out. Um, and we also had a, um, in our area, we have something called Fermentation Fest. Um, it's, we're going into our third year there. It's a big community um, celebration about fermented foods. So, of course, it was a no-brainer for our library to um, get into uh, how to ferment foods. And that's like sauerkraut or kimchi and that kind of stuff. Um, and through that one program, we've uh, started a fermentation club. Um, and it's just people who get together every month, and everyone brings vegetables to share. We chop them, we uh, jar them, we, and they ferment. And it's, uh, it's a wonderful addition to the community. This has brought in a lot of outside people, too. Um, and then another program we've done um, along the lines of fermentation is the, the kefir and the kombucha. And it's learning about ancient ways to... Um, keep our food healthful and preserve it. And um, these are very popular. And of course, it might not work in your community. And people may have never heard of these things. But in our community, it was, um, it, we've got this foundation of this big festival that, um, that, like I said, it's in its third year. So it's growing. And we are going to grow with it. So we're taking advantage of, of what we have here. Um, from this also then has grown. Um, something called we're calling a uh, food for thought documentary and discussion series um, because this kitchen creation programs have become so popular um, this is a, this is our first movie it's a year-long program and they're documentaries this one was fat sick and nearly dead um, we have the, we have it in our library for checkout and through this um, we we ran a juicing program so this is the flyer for the juicing program um, people in our community have bought juicers. I'm sure Amazon.com is very happy about that. Um, but um, it, it just creates a lot of community. It connects people to local farmers. Um, they're, they're all critically acclaimed films that we're showing. And it, it's a focus on farming practices, our food supply, and how we are nourishing our families. Um, so it's connecting. Um, with people and it's connecting people within the community to each other. Um, this is uh, the one we just sh uh, showed. It's called Veducated and it's about going on a vegan diet. And we don't promote any of these things really that the films are showing. It's, it's just giving a consciousness to the food that we put into our, our bodies. So, um, and from that, um, we are going into our summer uh, summer learning program, and we've already got some 
garden space that the village owns right across the street from our library and they are going to let us create a pizza garden for the kids so um, we are starting the growing uh, you know of the seedlings um, I think in late April and um, it's it's a venture that's going to go the whole year round and wrap up with a pizza party at the very end of the summer program and um, a lot of the veggies are going to be coming uh, from what the children have grown so um, that is pretty much it I, I do want to mention one other thing though <laughs> um, we got this book um, from Amazon.com because we created a wish list on there and we have been very very fortunate to have um, some anonymous donor um, purchase well over a thousand dollars worth of material for us so if you do not have a wish list um, I highly recommend you get on Amazon.com and make one because there are very generous people out there whether they're anonymous whether they're friends of your library who are willing to purchase things for your library through it. Um, wow, great. <laughs> thanks, Lee. That was awesome. Yeah. Uh, one cool, co good comment we got on Twitter. Uh, thanks for uh, to us for having this during the lunch hour. <laughs> we did not <laughs> oh, Sorry. <laughs> it just happened that way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'd have had virtual snacks if I could. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, to do this in your library, obviously, you guys have a full kitchen there then that people can we, use when they do these programs? We, Yes, we do have a full kitchen. However, pasta making, you know, you can have a little um, Coleman stove. You just need boiling water. Um, bagel making also, you don't have to bake the bagels there. You can, you can just parboil them in water. There's many, many of these programs do not need a full kitchen mm -hmm. um, or a stove. A Coleman, a Coleman stove would, right. would do you well. So. Okay. And because you're doing something food related, do you need to be certified by the health department or do anything special with insurance issues? Um, well, not as far as I know. Um, <laughs> again, <laughs> the municipality has insurance, um, uh -huh. so that really has not been an issue yeah. or even questioned. So. Well, those questions you don't want to ask for fear of the answer. <laughs> yes. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. All me. right, Lee, thank you very much. That was wonderful getting lots of tweets about the Grow Your Own Pizza uh, plan. So that looks like that's, that's going to go over really well.